Hey, good morning. It's uh, it's Mark here with another morning rant. It's early, okay? It's early. So, <clears throat> Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin um, had a plan. And that plan was to go to Chuck Schumer and tell Chuck Schumer that he wanted to resign from leadership in the, the Senate Democrat leadership. He wanted to resign from all his leadership positions. And then he was going to wait a week. After a week, if negotiations on the bipartisan bill didn't come uh, the way he wanted it to come, he was going to leave the Democrat Party and become an American independent. I reported that last week, I believe. Um, now Joe, Joe, Joe Manchin is up to some more shenanigans. And I think he's on his way out of the Democrat Party. I'm going to play this in its entirety. So bear with me. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. And uh, I've heard a lot of the mischaracterizations of my position since the president met with the House Democrats last Thursday. And I would like to make an attempt to clear up any confusion about where I stand on the legislation that's working its way through Congress. In all of my years of public service, and I've been around for a long time, I've never seen anything like this. The President of the United States has addressed the House Democratic Caucus twice recently to urge action on the bipartisan infrastructure bill, which sometimes we refer to as the BIF bill. Last week, the Speaker urged, Speaker Pelosi urged the importance of voting and passing the BIF bill before the President took the world stage overseas and still no action. In my view, this is not how the United States Congress should operate, or in my view, has operated in the past. The political games have to stop. Twice now, the House has balked at the opportunity to send the BIF legislation to the President. As you've heard, there are some House Democrats who say they can't support this infrastructure package until they get my commitment on the reconciliation legislation. It is time to vote on the BIF bill, up or down, and then go home and explain to your constituents the decision you made. And I've always said, if I can't go home and explain it, I can't vote for it, and if I can, I, I will. I've worked in good faith for three months, for the past three months, with President Biden, Leader Schumer, Speaker Pelosi, and my colleagues on the reconciliation bill, and I will continue to do so. For the sake of the country, I urge the House to vote and pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Holding this bill hostage is not going to work in getting my support for a recon reconciliation bill. Throughout the last three months, I've been straightforward about my con concerns that I will not support a reconciliation package that expands social programs and irresponsibly adds to our $29 trillion in national debt that no one seems to really care about or even talk about. Nor will I support a package that risks hurting American families suffering from historic inflation. Simply put, I will not support a bill that is this consequential without thoroughly understanding the impact that it'll have on our national debt, our economy, and most importantly, all of our American people. Every elected representative needs to know what they are voting for and the impact it has, not only on their constituents, but the entire country. That is why we must allow time for complete transparency and analysis on the impact of changes to our tax code and energy and climate policies to ensure that our country is well positioned to remain the superpower of the world while we inspire the rest of the world towards a cleaner environment. And this all can be done. I, for one, won't support a multi-trillion dollar bill without greater clarity about why Congress chooses to ignore the serious effects of inflation and debt that have on our economy and existing government programs. For example, how can I, in good conscience, vote for a bill that proposes massive expansion to social programs when vital programs like Social Security and Medicare face insolvency and benefits could start being reduced as soon as 2026 in Medicare and 2033 in Social Security? How does that make sense? And I don't think it does. Meanwhile, elected leaders continue to ignore exploding inflation, that our national debt continues to grow and interest payments on the debt will start to rapidly increase when the Fed has to start raising interest rates to try to slow down this runaway inflation. 
with the factors in mind and all of these factors that we've spoken about, I've worked in good faith for months with all of my colleagues to find a middle ground on a fiscally, and I, report, re, I repeat that, a fiscally responsible piece of legislation that fixes the flaws of the 2017 Trump tax bill that I thought was weighted far, far too far for the high-end earners and the needs of the American families and children. However, as more of the real details outline the basic framework are released, what I see are shell games, budget gimmicks that make the real cost of the so-called $1.75 trillion bill estimated to be almost twice that amount if the full time is run out, if you extended it permanently, and that we haven't even spoken about. This is a recipe for economic crisis. None of us should ever misrepresent to the American people what the real cost of legislation is. While I've worked hard to find a path to compromise, it's obvious compromise is not good enough for a lot of my colleagues in Congress. It's all or nothing, and their position doesn't seem to change unless we agree to everything. Enough is enough. It's time our elected leaders in Washington, all of us, stop playing games with the needs of the American people and holding a critical infrastructure bill hostage while there is opportunity in the reconciliation of bill that we can all agree on. And we've been talking about this for months. Again, to be clear, I will not support the reconciliation legislation without knowing how the bill will impact our debt and our economy and our country. And we won't know that until we work through the text. For the sake of our country, I, again, and I am urging all of my colleagues in the House to vote and pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill. It's bipartisan. 69 votes. We worked on that for many, many months. As I've said before, holding that bill hostage is not going to work to get my support of what you want. It's what we should all agree on and work through the process. I'm open to supporting a final bill that helps move our country forward, but I'm equally open to voting against a bill that hurts our country. And I've been very clear about that also. And most importantly, hurts every American. Let's work together. And I mean that. Let's all work together on getting a sensible reconciliation package, a package that really strengthens our nation and makes us better and leads the world. Thank you all. Let me just say, let me, say, let me, just say, if, let, let me say, let me say one thing. I'm not going to negotiate in public on this because I've been dealing in good faith and I will continue to deal in good faith with all of my colleagues on both sides. It's time to pass the bill and quit playing games. So I wanted to play that last part. I wanted to play that last part because, because he says it's time to stop playing games, but that's exactly what he's doing. He said he's not going to negotiate in public, but that's exactly what he's doing. He's negotiating in public. When he said, why was he doing this press conference? What, what was the need for this press conference? There was no need for this press conference. He could have just passed out a release. He could have just said this fleetingly as he walked back and forth to the Capitol. Uh, yeah, so or he could have said this. Excuse me, to a reporter as he was passing around in the hallways. He did not have to go and make this statement. He did not have to go and do this the way he did it. But he did it for a reason. He is planning on leaving the Democrat Party. He's going to do it within the next two weeks, if not the next month. He is going to remove himself from the Democrat Party, and this is one step to doing it. The reason why he hasn't done it yet was because, like I said before, his first plan, and I reported on it, his first plan was to resign from his position as leadership, then wait a week, then come out as an American independent and leave the Democrat Party. But because that got reported, he went out and said it was bullshit. He went out and said it was wrong. It was false reporting. And then the next day, he said, yep, I will leave the party and become an independent. I'll still caucus with the Democrats, but I'll leave and become an independent if we can't get this legislation through. If I'm causing the Democrats harm, that's what I'll do. I'll leave. So he lied. He said it was reported that he he he, he won't leave. The, he will leave the Democrat Party. He said he won't. And then the next day he said he will. And now he's doing this because that plan blew up. So now he has to do another plan. And this is his other plan. He has drawn a line in the sand. He has said he is not going to vote for the bipartisan. He's not going to vote for the uh, the House. Uh, stimulus package or reconciliation bill he's not going to vote for that but he wants them to vote for his bipartisan bill he wants listen this is negotiation for him he says i am not going to vote for your bill 
but you should vote for mine. Where's the where's the where's the compromise here? Where's the compromise? He's saying the Senate now. If I've, I've done this before and I'll do it again, this is how a bill becomes law. It starts all bills start in the House. That's per the Constitution. All bills start in the House. It goes to the Senate. It goes to the president and inside that framework to get the check and balance each other. Now, if one word, if the House pass a bill and one word is changed in the Senate, it has to go back to the House for them to agree on that word. That's why before anything get written, they sit and negotiate and say, OK, Senate, Senate, House, President, is this what we all agree on? So when it comes to the sausage making process when it comes to actual voting we can just vote it through and get it signed and be gone and just move on to something else but <clears throat> but uh, well that's why they that's why they sit down and do that now also the senate can pass a bill but if the senate pass a bill it has to go back to the house so you got the house senate White House. If the Senate pass a bill, it has to go back to the House and then from there it goes to the White House. So everything has to go to the House because the Speaker of the House is the, you can say the second or the third in line to the presidency. Is the President, Speaker, is the President, the Vice President, Speaker of the House, President Pro Tem. Then they go on from there. So he is setting this up to leave the Democrat Party because he is not getting his way. He is not getting his moderate conservative Democrat way. And he is he is tired of being the scapegoat. Now, I will give him this. He has come out and said some things that he want to have happen. Christian Cinema in Arizona has said nothing. She will not meet with any of her constituents. She will not meet with any reporters. She will not put out any press releases. She will not tweet what she wants. We have no idea what she wants. We got an idea of what he wants. So even if we got him on our side, we still have to deal with Christian cinema in Arizona. So the Democrats are shooting themselves in the foot. And you can't blame Joe Biden for this. Now, OK, you say, well, he's not an effective leader because he's the president. and He can't convince Joe Manchin. Joe Manchin, like every other senator, is their own person. One person can stop the whole show. Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter. No matter what side of the house you're on, no matter what side of the Senate you're on, a person in the house can't stop too much because they got enough votes in there to kill, to drown out anybody. That's why they got so many caucuses and everything in the house. The Senate is, is, is only a hundred of them and one monkey can stop the whole show. One. But right now we got two. So Joe Biden can't get anything done because of two Democrats. Okay, let's do what he says. Let's pass the infrastructure bill. Let's pass the bipartisan infrastructure bill. He is not going to ever vote on that reconciliation bill. And the reconciliation bill, the way it's written, the way the way it's worded, it can cancel out Bush tax cuts and, and uh, Trump's tax cuts. Which he says he don't like. But he's against taxing the rich. And you wonder why we got such a large deficit. And then, and then after all of this, he waits. He waits. Now, now Joe Biden stayed behind and, and, and negotiated with these people more before he went to Glasgow. He stayed behind and arrived late so he can negotiate with these people. And he still couldn't get anything done before he left. And Joe Manchin waited until he was out of the country to do this grandstanding right here. That way, the president can't call him to the White House. Now, the president can get him on the phone and teleconference, but he can't call him to the White House. This is a sly move. This is a house of cards move. And that's what Joe Manchin's doing. So I guarantee you in the next couple of weeks, this man is going to leave the Democrat Party. So that's my take on it. I'm going to get up out of here, people. It's Tuesday. Hope you guys had a great Monday. Hope you have a great Tuesday. I'm out of here. Y'all take care. And I will see you on the next one. All right. Y'all take care. I'm out.